Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Careers Out There. I'm your host, Mark Luber, and we are helping you find a career that fits you. Today's topic is diversity in the workplace. Rather than speaking a lot on this major topic, I'm going to write about it on the site and let this video speak for itself. I recently sat down with one of my oldest friends in life, Dr. Carmen Woods Hollowell. We've been friends since we were six years old. That's like 22 years already. She is an obstetrician gynecologist with offices in Park City, Illinois and Lindenhurst, Illinois. When I was interviewing Dr. Hollowell about her career, I decided to ask her what role being African American has played in her life and in her career, starting with how she chose what college to attend. She gave a powerful, eye-opening five-minute answer to that question. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on this, and I'd love for you guys to share your stories at Careers Out There, no matter what aspect of diversity you bring to the workplace. All right, let's meet Carmen. So one of the things that I think is, is very important to touch about that you, when you see me, you obviously can't get past is that I'm a, I'm a brown skin, I'm an African American, and proudly so. And I think that that impacts um, greatly and dramatically how you perceive the world and how the world perceives you, because that is the first thing that they see. Whether the importance other people put on it or not may or may not be there, but it is there, and it does make you part of who you were. Um, my parents were both uh, born and raised in the South um, in the 50s and 60s in a very tumultuous time. My grandparents uh, going to college in the 30s and 40s at a time where th that just for African America just wasn't quite frankly done. Um, these things can't help but shape who you are and, and how you see things and be a very motivating factor in how you achieve. Um, I grew up in a um, predominantly white suburb um, of, of Chicago um, and that only heightened those differences and having a sense of pride instilled from your family was was paramount. Um, I went to the schools may not be known to, to many of you they are both historically black um, colleges and universities or HBCUs for short and I found that that was an important and integral part of, of my development of what made me who I was because it was one of the few times if not the only time where I was seen in my life as a person, not a black woman or a woman or anything else. We were all black women at Spelman. So you took gender out of the picture, you took race out of the picture, you took economic background out of the picture. It was just how you achieved based on the merits of your schoolwork and the quality of work that you did. And it was the only time I could say in my life that I'll ever be judged just on those things. What is the content of my work? and nothing else, because it was a fairly level playing field there. Now, that notwithstanding, I had offers to go everywhere, um, and and many colleges had written me letters to come up there and interview. I had received letters from Harvard and Yale, things that were widely recognized by most people worldwide. But my choice is one that I chose that I think, um, if you are in a similar circumstance as mine, that you may want to choose, because it is such a valuable, very special experience, um, very unique and very wonderful and very sacred. And my medical school experience was very similar. My father went to the same school, again, traditionally, um, historically an African-American uh, medical school. And that is unique in and of itself. There aren't many of those very, very treasurable things. It's like our yeshiva. It's, it's very wonderful. Um, I grew up in a time where things were changing. And so for my children, they'll never see in their reality to tell them that there could be an African-American president. That's just what they know. But I grew up at a time where my father wasn't, who's also, uh, you know, a surgeon, he couldn't walk in the hospital in the front door. He had to play only at certain things. He couldn't eat um, at the same cafeteria. My father-in-law had to change clothes with the janitors. He's a surgeon as well because they didn't have a place for a black doctor to change clothes because they never heard of one and they never had one. He was their first. My mother in Memphis, Tennessee, can only go to the zoo on a certain half day a week. That's the only day they let little black kids go to the zoo. You couldn't go any other day. You didn't dare drink from the same water fountain. I'm just talking about walking through the doors of the public city Memphis Metropolitan Zoo. So these things help to shape who you are. Uh, they help to shape your compassion. I think that all the life experiences we bring make us better people. Um, and I think that's 
quite frankly, a big push for diversity and having to people that don't necessarily look like you do different things. Um, it inextricably makes you who you are and can't help but mold you um, for the better.